Hi, and welcome to my kitchen. Today it's ice cream and sherbets as we continue to uh, plan on entertaining our friends and our family, making things from scratch. Uh, that's great fun for me. Ice cream, thank you. Ice cream in our time um, is a very involved thing you buy in a package and you don't really know the process much anymore, but you remember if some of you are as old as I, when you were little kids, why, someone in the neighborhood had an old ice cream hand crank freezer. Let me show you how that worked and why it worked. The, uh, the principle is very simple. What you did was to put the ice cream mix, which consisted of eggs and uh, a lot of buttermilk, uh, a lot of uh, high butterfat milk, I should say, good cream, you see, into the drum, and you had ice on the outside mixed with a little salt. Then when you pour it in, and you would turn the crank and it would scrape the uh, mixture from the sides as it began to freeze, you see? So then that way, the, the mixture would fall down upon itself and it would keep mixing and it would keep freezing. And after about an hour cranking, why you could uh, turn to all your friends and say, hey, we're all ready and we're gonna have a grand time. And it was delicious ice cream. Now, the difference between this sort of ice cream, this is really close to what the Italians call gelati. And you know who brought us gelati to this country? You know who brought us ice cream? A fellow by the name of Tom Jefferson. Tom brought us so many wonderful things. I don't know how to thank him, but every time I'm in Washington, D.C., I always stop by his memorial and uh, and wish him well and thank him again for the wonderful things he brought us. He brought it to the colonies, served it the first time at a dinner party, and then through the years, the process has changed considerably. We no longer make it in an upright tube, you see, scraping it down, which is the old gelati style, but we do it on the side so that as the drums roll, uh, it's, uh, it's whipped up in air. So we really make frozen whipped cream, much more than we do a solid ice cream. A contemporary ice cream factory is a marvelous thing to see because the, the process is quite involved and is really very expensive, but it's very beautiful. The equipment is very costly and exciting. I used to work in one. The mix is placed in a small vat. You make the ice cream mix first, and then you put it in what they call a seasoning vat or flavoring vat. He's adding some strawberries, you see, to the mix. You know, all ice cream starts with vanilla ice cream and then finally into a freezer. This freezer turns out about 250 gallons of ice cream an hour. That's why you can't ever shut the thing off or it'll just freeze solid on you. I know because I did it once at Arden Farms in Seattle. Finally, the ice cream is whipped then and then placed into either small cartons or little, we used to do old bricks, but now we do uh, big Balkans for, for the uh, ice cream store trade. And here you can see the pieces of strawberry in this beautiful ice cream. Just little chunks of strawberry, you see? Oh, when it's that fresh, ice cream is just delicious. The only thing I didn't like about the ice cream factory was going into the freeze room because it's 20 below zero in there and you can't even walk. Your toes freeze to the floor. It's just desperately cold. But that's the only thing you can do in order to keep the ice cream fresh. So the minute that it's whipped, it is frozen at 20 degrees below. So it's, uh, it's ready right away. Michael, bring me some ice cream from this fellow. This is the, uh, the peacock ice cream factory that we just saw. Thank you. The peacock, let's see what he sent here. Because ice cream you know, the old strawberry chocolate vanilla is just really gone. What has he got here? He's got a, cha a cappuccino. It's tell you it's not the same old stuff. Fresh peach ice cream. Here's a ci cinnamon ice cream. Mmm, it is cinnamon. It's kind of like those red cinnamon candies. That's beautiful stuff. I didn't even know that was here. Pistachio nut ice cream? I would have expected that. That's terrific. Then we have a rum raisin. Mmm, that sounds good. Here's a club chocolate. Which club did he get it from? I'm wondering. Peppermint candy. Oh, Channing's ready for that one. Here's a maple walnut. Uh, mocha chip. You know, with all these flavors, we still sell more good old vanilla than anything else in terms of flavors. I love vanilla best myself. This is good quality. Well, let me clear a spot and I'll show you how to make some ice creams yourself. There's no reason or some sherbets, you know. In the old days in France, they used to serve sherbets in the middle of a meal. Halfway through the meal, you'd stop and have a nice sherbet. Sherbets are not terribly sweet, uh, and they're not made with a lot of uh, butter fat, so that you can have a good time with them and not, uh, not consider it fattening. 
The difference between a sherbet and a sorbet is one, arrogance. It's a French term. I hate to see it in an American menu, but there is a difference. N generally, sorbets or French sherbets have egg white in them, and American sherbets have a little bit of milk in them. Not cream, but a little bit of milk. Let's make one. I have a marvelous thing for you to taste. You better see the equipment first, huh? Uh, in our time, we can use the old can cranker, or you can spend a mint, just spend a fortune on an electric gelati maker. They run around $300. Or here's, a, here's an interesting one. This one is, but you have to have the refrigerator. This one is, a, is a, literally a gelati maker. This, this dome, you refrigerate first, you see. You see it has ed or ridges so that the thing can really get cold. And then you put the blade in, and you see the blade works just like a regular gelati maker. It scrapes it off the sides. It does not roll it on its side. That's how you get air into it. In our country, legally, you can put 50% uh, of uh, air into your ice cream and up. That's what the law says. So it can be, when you buy a package of ice cream and you melt it down, you may have only a cup in there if they whip it full of enough air. But it must contain 10% butter fat in order to be called ice cream, or up to 14%, then you can call it catering ice cream. That's the good stuff. And you just blow up like a balloon. So we do not control the amount of air you can whip into ice cream. High quality ice creams have very little air in them, much less. Gelatis have no air at all. So this one works well. And you just plug it into your refrigerator in the freezing unit. Uh, no, you can't buy these without the refrigerator. But it works very well. I'll show you how to use one. Because I want to make a wine, a wine sherbet for you. Let's see. No, I'm not putting, am I putting any milk in there? No. Yes, I am. Some cream in this one. So it is a sherbet, an American sherbet. First of all, we want a bowl. And I'm going to add two cups of a very dry wine, uh, dry white wine. You can add a uh, dry sauterne if you like. And if you're really wealthy and just crazy as a loon, you can use champagne. I say that because I developed this recipe for one of my restaurants years ago. And, uh, and uh, the fellow wanted, the fellow that wanted it for dinner, wanted a, a champagne sherbet. And I told him it was too expensive to make. There's no reason to use good champagne. You can use sauterne instead. Well, he wasn't happy with that. We did use the sauterne. He absolutely loved the evening, and that's what I want you to do. Now, I'm going to add to this, to the two cups of uh, sauterne, a dry white wine, the juice of two lemons and one orange. Got that? Then we need one cup of sugar. Ah, here we are. One cup of sugar. Mmm. And to that, we're going to add one cup of water. And then we're going to add half a cup of cream uh, to flavor it. Or you can use milk. If you want a low-cal uh, dessert, you can use a nice milk. Where's the cream? Here it is. I'm just going to use a little bit of cream here, handy. It makes a very rich one. There, that should do it. Now, you don't have to do a thing to this except to stir it and uh, put it in the machine. If you're really wise, you'll chill this first because the machine can only do so much and it will quicken the, the process if you will uh, refrigerate it first. Refrigerate this first, the bowl, the mix. That's the word we used to use. You know, I used to, I used to eat quarts and quarts of ice cream every night when I was, let's see. God, it was a while back, wasn't it? <laughs> I was about uh, 19 and I was a mix cook at Arden Farms in Seattle and we made 20,000 gallons every day, every shift. It was wonderful fun. All right, so I'm gonna put that. Uh, Ralph, will you trade machines with me? You've got the one out of the freezer already, and when you put this one back, here you go. Thank you, sir. Got it? Hold on, that's going to spill. You got it? Okay. Do you understand what we're doing? We just, he took one out of the refrigerator. Yes, obviously I have another refrigerator down the hall, which is where it should be. And let's see what how it came out. See how this came out. This is an interesting thing. Oh, it looks perfect. Let me get a spoon. What did I do with them? Here they are. It's very tender yet. It needs to... Um, it needs to uh, sit a little bit longer in the freezer, and uh, I don't want to use the word harden. I want to use the, your, or the word cure, but I want to taste it now. Wine, lemon juice, orange juice, a little bit of sugar, a little bit of cream. It's perfect. Somebody said, you always say perfect at your recipe. I wouldn't lie to you. I wouldn't lie to you. It's grand because it's, it cleanses the tongue, and this, this kind of thing you can serve in the middle of the meal. Halfway through, you see, after, after the pasta course, or before, um, before the heavy main course, serve a bowl of sherbet that will cleanse the tongue. Mmm. You know, we should just, you guys should just wait a minute and uh, I'll eat this. Boy, that's good. Mmm. Let me put this aside and we'll go on with some others. There's another kind of machine in the market that's really a kick to play with. Uh, it's a, um, th this doesn't look like it'll work, I know. 
but uh, you have a, a plastic jacket and a crank and a, and a paddle. And now let me get the inner lining because the inner lining is the important part. It's in the freezer and I need a, I need a uh, pot holder, otherwise you'll freeze your fingers. What you do, it's lined with, it's a, it's a bucket lined with that um, blue, what do you call it, blue um, freeze them up ice for, um, for your uh, summer packaging, you know, when you're going out on a picnic. This, is, this was liquid, but we froze it overnight. Put that in the freezer overnight. This is the pint one. There's a bigger one, too, which I have. I'll show you. So then you put the plunger in, and you pour in the mix, and uh, it takes about 20 minutes to make a pint of ice cream or a quart if you use the bigger machine. Let me show you how it works. What's the next one we're going to make? I don't even remember. I've got so many here. Oh, oh, this is too good for words. I want to make a raspberry ice for you. This is fun. You simply take a package of frozen raspberries. All right. That should do us. And we want to add to that one fourth cup of sugar. Mm, that's about a fourth of a cup. One cup of water. And we're going to throw all of this in a food blender. Whoops, almost put in a bowl full of sugar. Where am I going here? Sorry about that. All right. And so let's, uh, let's put that in the food blender. I want to grind it all down. We don't want to grind up the seeds too much, so don't, don't use it to, don't do it, put it in there too long. Just, Oh, I have the sugar going. There we are. This is so much fun. And the kids uh, will love this. And I'll show you why in just a minute because uh, you don't have to do that much cranking. Are you ready? Well, I don't know whether this has so many gears on it. I don't know if to put it on wash, rinse, or dainty things. Let's try this one. There we go. Doesn't take long, does it? There we go. That's fine. I'll put this in a bowl and we'll stir in a couple of, because it is going to be a, a uh, kind of a sherbet French style, we're going to make a raspberry sorbet. So rather than using milk this time, we're going to use two egg whites. Who's got the egg whites? Here they are, the usual place. So we'll simply put in, that's one, two, two egg whites. I've already whipped these ahead of time. Just stir them in, in uh, gently. You don't need to do much to them. There we are. Don't, uh, don't whip them, just fold them in. And if you don't get them all mixed up, don't worry about it. The, the machine itself will mix them up later. There. Now, we need to put this into the machine, and it's so tiny and so cute. This is the pint one, and I've made enough for you to put in the quart one, so I'm just going to add half of this because I want you to see how it works. I've already filled up the other four I have. There we are. Put the uh, lid on this, and it comes with, a, comes with a crank. It's really kind of fun. These are made in Japan and imported in this country now, and you can find them in any gourmet shop and most department stores. Tell them you want the ice cream machine that does it all by itself. It doesn't need any ice at all. Okay, now we put the lid on. There we go. Have to lock that. There it is. Then we put the crank in, and then you turn it. Ugh. Just hold, hold on there, you rascal. Got to get started at one, and now it's ready. Two, three. Back again. Now it's ready to go. Every, about every uh, five minutes, three minutes, you, you give it a few turns. You don't sit there and crank it. I have one ready for you that I made in a larger one. If I can guess which one it is. I see it. I see it. Aha. Uh -huh. We will simply trade sides here. I think. Yes, it's this one. <laughs> it's this one. Here's a, here's a quart of strawberry, of a raspberry. You can do it with strawberries too. Raspberry sorbet. 